The information provided or any opinions expressed in this show are of a general nature only and should not be construed or relied on as a recommendation to invest in a financial product or class of financial products. You should seek financial advice specific to your circumstances from an authorised financial advisor before making any financial decisions. A disclosure statement can be obtained free of charge by calling 0800 878 961. You're listening to Radio Kidnappers, the voice of Hawke's Bay. This is a program called Canny View. That's a great name for a program, isn't it, Trudy? It is a great name Canny for a program. Canny View. And it's hosted by the team from the Stewart Group right here in Hastings. Our pleasure, as always, to have them in the studio in the hot seat, so to speak. Trudy Watson, and how are you, Trudy? We well? I'm very well. I was just saying to Ken that I've just come back from holiday, so I'm still in a very relaxed, chilled kind of <laughs> mode at the moment. And I suppose this is the last place you wanted to come today. Oh, well, oh. actually, how can you say that, Ken? I always <laughs> love to see Ken, and the first thing I look for is the shoes. That's right. Got <laughs> you some... got your outfit going. Beautiful pink shoes on today. Yeah. And uh, before we get to today's topic, which uh, in your case is from your specialty department, which is insurance, just to remind our listeners, Trudy, what is the Stuart Group all about? Oh, that's a really broad question. Yes, it is. What is the Stuart Group all about? I guess it's you've got a group of people who specialise in a lot of different um, topics around finance. So we've got wealth advisors, Kiwi Saver, and superannuation advisors. Um, I specialise in personal and business insurance, um, but we cover all those, and, and we're kind of the one-stop shop where you go to uh, when you want to get your. I was going to say a rude word there, but you want to get your stuff together. <laughs> yes, we know what you meant. <laughs> but And I guess also a, a lot of people listening to this program might think that's only for the rich and famous, but it's not the case, is it? Well, I'm not rich and I'm not yet famous. You are famous. <laughs> <laughs> In my own mind. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's, it's for everybody. I mean, yeah. everybody needs it. You know, from from um, somebody who has uh, just starting out in KiwiSaver and maybe just, con you know, 19, 20, they need advice long term as well as somebody um, who has 100, 200,000 in their KiwiSaver, mm. as an example. And a lot of the advice that you give is absolutely free. Yes, yeah, all, all the insurance advice, KiwiSaver advice is absolutely free. Um, you kind of get that expertise and I think a lot of it for people is peace of mind mm -hmm. because I don't know about you, you can't be an expert on everything. No. I have a wonderful plumber. I have absolutely yes. no idea about how <laughs> things work. If I put crystals down and it doesn't clear, that's, his, that's my lot and I call him and I don't think about it and that's kind of the same coming to us you put it in our hands we can give you as much or as little information as you you need depending on your personality mm. type um, and then just some guidance and some suggestions and the other good thing about dealing with you is that you're not pushing anyone's barrow are you you're just advising no. you're not saying go and see this person or no. go and see that person I mean we for, for me we we deal with all the insurers in New Zealand so we can choose who we want to work with mm. depending on what's best for our our client or what's best for the individual Indeed, now today we're going to talk about, like we say, insurance, and uh, you're asking the question, why are the majority of Kiwis not considering the risk of protecting themselves with an insurance on their life? Why do you think that is? It, it's just incredible to me. Um, I think the big, what has what shown in research is this stigma, and I think it's around people talking about their finances personally, mm -hmm. because people uh, either don't want to show off, yeah. or they don't feel that they're as good as other people, um, I think the other thing is people actually don't want to think about things that are bad happening. You don't want to have a conversation perhaps with your partner, mm. what would happen if you died because then that makes yes. you feel sad. <laughs> um, and it can be something as simple as that emotional side to it. Um, but it, it it does. You don't have to kind of go into that that you know what would happen if you died. Well, I'd be really upset. It'd be like just okay financially. How would the family manage? Mm. I wonder though. In these times of, say, uh, economic uncertainty, you know, we keep hearing that things are going to get worse, people might be looking at what are they spending their household budget on and saying, well, you know, how can we cut back? Do I really need mm. to buy two lotto tickets a week? 
do I really need life insurance? Mm. And it might be costing me, I don't know, just say it's costing me $20 a week. Yes. That might be $20 a week, which is buying kids' lunches. So, Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yes. It's a really good point. I mean, you, 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 like my grandmother says, you cut your cloth, mm. you know, according to your circumstances. Um, but generally there, there is advice, even if it's in terms of, well, how would I manage, even if it wasn't insurance, mm. would you have a, a plan B? You know, um, if not savings, then somebody to go to. Would you be aware of resources out there that might be there to help you? It's just kind of thinking about what would you do in certain situations. A little bit like when I went on holiday and my boyfriend said to me the first thing he wanted to do was, because we were on a, an island, he wanted to know what the tsunami evacuation <laughs> plan was. Now, even though I'm in insurance, that made yes. me laugh. Yes. But he did that five minutes later and we enjoyed the holiday. Mm. And, there's usually something that you can do. Yes. Um, it doesn't have to cost the earth. Can you, for instance, if you're financially strapped, can you put a hold on your life insurance for a, a certain period of time and then yes. take it up again? Yep, there are um, some insurers will um, do uh, like a premium suspension. Mm -hmm. uh, some insurers will do it where you can have the cover going but maybe not have the premium paid for a period of time you have to obviously meet the criteria of some sort of hardship or there's a reason mm -hmm. why. But yes, um, say for instance, income protection, a lot of the insurers, if somebody was going on um, maternity leave, um, you can suspend that for up to a year. There's all, all different ways of, mm. of managing insurance. It's not just you either have it or you don't. Which group of people in your experience might be the least um, and interested in having insurance, they think, ah, think about that later on? Um, probably younger people. Mm. I think generally younger people are maybe because they don't have the same responsibilities, perhaps if they haven't got a mortgage mm. or uh, children, and also because when you're younger you think nothing bad is ever going to happen to you, which is a wonderful feeling to have. Isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I can barely remember it. <laughs> What's the alternative to insurance? Is there an alternative at all? Well, there, there is in terms of, I mean, insurance is to cover, say, lost income. Mm. So say, for example, if um, somebody wasn't able to work for a period of time and they weren't on ACC and they weren't really receiving very much help, perhaps on the sickness benefit, it certainly wouldn't cover lost, the full lost income, um, then you could look at having savings. What's the most common insurance that people might have? Most common would probably be life insurance. That That's the, um, in terms of personal insurance, mm -hmm. um, would be life insurance. Uh, generally, people with family or mortgage will have that uh, just to help out so that if they weren't there, there's a bit of a safety net for people. In terms of um, insurance overall, um, the research has shown that people are more likely to have car and home contents insurance mm. than they are on their life. Probably two thirds of people surveyed would have that and about 20% would have insurance on their life, which is incredible to think um, that we place that value on. And, and I guess it's just easier for us to think about, well, what happens if something happened to my car? You know, then that would be covered. Whereas what happens uh, if, if I die, oh, I don't want to think about yes. that, or I'm not able to work, well, that's too big, and I don't actually know what's important to cover and where do I start. So we just put it in the too hard basket and, and don't do anything. Insurance like that should be a family affair, though, shouldn't it? I mean, you know, we don't like talking about dying, but we should be sitting down as a husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend if we're living together or, or partner yeah. and partner and saying, well, OK, look, yeah, we are going to die sometime, uh, but what's going to happen to me when you die? Yeah. And we should be having that conversation. Well, I mean, if you think about it, um, some of the clients that I have, you can really see they uh, have a lot, they feel very responsible for their family. So they want this. You know, they're prepared to have those hard conversations, mm. okay? I want to know that um, my partner and my children are looked after if I'm not here um, to help out, mm. you know, that income is lost. And it isn't, it, I mean, it, it isn't the end of the world to have those conversations. Perhaps it's more about us as, as humans not liking to think that we're mm. not going to be here any sure. longer. Um, that like, stops those com yeah. well it's not the most super fun no. to think about but it is also <laughs> really nice like anything yes. it's just knowing that you're looking after your family 
I wonder where you draw the line though, Trudy. Um, before you came in, I was doing some research for our conversation and I found the top 10 most important questions and answers um, with regard to life insurance. And one of the questions was, uh, should I just buy the basic life insurance because, or should I get bells and whistles? And mm. But when I look at anything now, my, one of my daughters taught me a valuable lesson some years ago and she said that when I buy anything, she said, I look at how much it costs. Mm. Not in just the dollar value, but how many hours do I have to work to mm. pay for this thing that I'm mm. going to buy? Mm. And probably with our insurances that we have at home, I think I've probably got to work about a month. Mm. And what am I really seeing for it apart from peace of mind? You know, people like to be a bit more well, tangible about stuff. I, I guess, yeah, and I think that's great that your daughter's doing. That's a really good way mm. of... Um, not being or being connected to your money mm. isn't it so it's not going out saying oh I can get this I can, and thinking well I actually have to spend two hours yeah. to pay for that in terms of um, buying insurance I guess it's it's really hard to quantify mm. the value of peace of mind for every person yes you know what what that is to you will be different for me and that's where we kind of work with clients to find out their their tipping point where they're comfortable mm. it's like a seesaw that it's different depending on who's on either end and it's not going to be the same for everybody no for instance i would never consider income protection because i might have told you before but i've been working since i was 16. yeah it's nearly 50 years and in 50 years i've had five days off wow so if i had had income protection you would have been gutted, wouldn't you? <laughs> I would have been you gutted. Would have been, you would have been falling downstairs. <laughs> so, I, so, but I guess you can understand why people say, yeah, well, you know, I'm fit, I'm healthy, why would I? Well, I've this is, a, a, honestly, this is the thing, because I am I tend to think of myself as, although I do insurance, I just think nothing bad is ever going to yeah. happen to me. I'm just, you know, I'm so fit, I'm amazing. Um, but when you have little scares come up, it is a really nice feeling. And it, again, it is all down to um, the difference in personality types, mm. the difference in what you've got to um, look after. You know, as, as we get older, certainly for me, I mean, I'm just, it's just me. Yeah. So I, I, it, it, the insurance I have is just for me. I'm not thinking I need to worry about looking after my family or anything. Sure. Is there life insurance and life insurance, or does one size fit all? Uh, there are, well, there's, there's accidental death insurance, mm. so that obviously just covers an accident, and then there's just life insurance, which covers any way mm -hmm. kind of you die. Um, I mean, there are a few criteria in there about suicide at, at yeah. the beginning, that sort of thing. Um, and then there's different ways of structuring the the cost of it um, over a period of time and this is why you really need to talk to somebody to actually go like you said what what is this for why mm. are you having life insurance not okay every single person that I'm going to meet I'm going to put 250,000 or 500,000 life cover on mm. their life which is is what happened mm. um, because how do I know what you really need unless I have a conversation and we talk about it and you say to me yes that is what I need thank you or actually I would rather have a little bit more or a little bit less sure. and have something else. I wonder if you could afford it, let's say money wasn't an object but let's say that you, you were quite well healed yeah. and you couldn't afford insurance, why wouldn't you have an ins a life insurance policy that left your dependents with I don't know, 10 million dollars? Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you just have as much money coming in after you die that you can afford to have come in? Uh, Is that well, a good view well, to look, way, way to look um, at it? I guess, well, w so that your family has lots. If you, yeah. you're saying, okay, I can afford the premiums. Yeah. Uh, some people do have mm. a lot of insurance. I don't know about 10 million. You have to also remember when you put the cover in place, um, when you apply to the insurer, they say, why do you need $10 million mm. on your life? And you have to justify and show rationale. Because imagine then if something happened to you. They're out of pocket. Um. Well, million. generally, the, there has to be a financial rationale mm. to it, not just enrichment, really? not just enrichment. Um, so it, it would need to cover something. So it's not just debt, but, you know, um, they, they haven't had me around. So um, 
you know, they're used to having this amount of income, so we pay that. So why would anyone need 10 million on their, oh, their right. life? Well, that's a good thing about talking to you is that you do learn something every time. I, I learn something every time. But So I would just presume that I could create a legacy through my insurance company by paying premiums. It, that doesn't work that way. Well, it might not be as simple as you think. Mm. It might not be as simple as you think. They do, an insurer, well, with high sums assured, they want to look at the financial rationale, so you have to um, mm. answer questions, whatever they may be, on the level of cover as well as um, them checking you medically. Well, wow. look at that. Um, yeah, I'm good. I'm almost That's lost good. <laughs> <laughs> but not quite. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> okay, so uh, when we buy insurance, I mean, I have some life insurance. My wife doesn't. Mm. Good thing or not? Because she's probably obviously expecting me to go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we always wear the men out first, don't we? <laughs> that's, right. that's the way it works. Well, I mean, that's a question down for you guys, I guess. I mean, that if she wasn't around, how would you would you manage okay without her income? That, that, they're the sort of questions um, that I would be asking clients. Are they are they comfortable with that? Have they got, has she got KiwiSaver? Are there savings that would be kind of paid out mm. that would help cover um, expenses um, if someone is to pass away as well? I mean, uh, uh, funerals aren't cheap these days. No, you know, there's right. all, that, all that sort of thing that you have to take into account when somebody passes over. How often should I be looking at um, looking at my life insurance and maybe upgrading it or downgrading it? So, oh. Well, we always say, to, we, we um, look to review with somebody every year. Mm -hmm. uh, we will mm -hmm. uh, uh, contact them, but we also ask that clients get in touch sooner if anything changes and if they're not sure. And I mean, the thing is, it's so easy these days for people, you're sitting at home and you go, oh, I wonder if um, this needs looking at. Email, 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 forget yeah. about it and it, it, you then get a response. So it's not the time-consuming things that it used to have been back in the day where you'd have to have somebody come into the office. Um, these things can be really quick and easy yeah. to check. And the great thing about Stuart Group is that you'll actually get on to us to remind us yes. that we need to come see you. But yeah. not everyone does that, do they? No. No. Well, I mean, I think you would have seen some of the things in the press over the last six months about how active some advisors are mm. with their clients. You know, and clients Indeed. don't know that they're meant to be no. being contacted and um, looked after. Yeah, well, most people, I suppose, get a life insurance to put in the bottom drawer. And, and forget the, about it. Yeah, until they're dying, and um, yeah. that's the end of that, isn't it? Yeah. What about if someone of my own age, you know, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a senior citizen now, I've got my no, gold card. wow. Um, is it likely that if I apply for insurance that I'm going to be very readily accepted? It, it depends on your health. Mm. It, it really does depend on your health. Yeah, we do have people um, as a sort of getting over 60, 65, and they may have a need for some period of time to have um, insurance. Yep, you can still get it, mm. but it would just be you, you still need to meet the same criteria. If I was going to cut an insurance, let's say I had all the bells and whistles, I had just I had mortgage insurance, I got income insurance, I got life insurance. What else could I be having? Trauma, could health. Have trauma, okay. Yes. And, and I came to say, so look, look, trivia, got all these. Mm. What might you say to me? I would ask you exactly the same questions that I ask everyone to try and get an idea about what your situation was in life and why you have these. We do have people come to us and we, believe it or not, do say, why have you got all yes. this? Is this still needed? Yeah. And people go, or, or will say, what was the thinking behind having this insurance? Mm. So that we get an idea and then we see what their personal situation is now and then we might discuss how that would fit in and is it still needed. Mm, indeed. So it's not just about um, getting more, it's making sure that you've got the right level. So it, there comes a point where you don't need as much. Yeah, and, and again, I just reiterate that point that when we do come to see you for your advice, you're not getting commission by selling it for this company or that company. So you're not loading me up. So oh, you should have that. Why haven't you thought about this? No, no. No, because I have to sleep at night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not getting any free trips to Fiji or anything, are you? For your oh, you yes, said what you're saying. I just can't. No, I had to pay for that myself. <laughs> no. Just about out of time, Trudy, just remind our listeners we want to come and see you for any advice with regard to insurance or, in fact, any of your colleagues at the Stewart Group for financial advice. How do we do that? Uh, you can call us on 06 878 8961 to make an appointment or we're based at 204 Karamu Road in Hastings. 
As always, my pleasure, Trudy. You look after yourself. We'll talk to you same time, same place next time. Thank you very much, Ken. The information provided or any opinions expressed in this show are of a general nature only and should not be construed or relied on as a recommendation to invest in a financial product or class of financial products. You should seek financial advice specific to your circumstances from an authorised financial advisor before making any financial decisions. A disclosure statement can be obtained free of charge by calling 0800 878 961.